unsecured creditors to get nothing. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we have an update on the Porter Davis collapse. Looks like the unsecured creditors are going to get nothing. They owe $147 million. This is the, the challenge of the construction industry. You know, as an architect, my costs are really my time, my staff, when I used to have them, renting of, the, of you know, software and my premises. So if someone doesn't pay me, it's painful, but it's not as bad as if you're a subby and you've bought material and installed it. Then you, you're kind of, kind of screwed. Guys, so let's let's check this one out. This is, oh boy. So, written by Alex Turner Cohen. Porter Davis owes one hundred and forty-seven million after collapse. Unsecured unsecured creditors expect expected to get nothing. So, unsecured credit, creditors of collapsed building firm Porter Davis are unlikely to recover a single cent of their lost funds. Those are the sobering details released on Wednesday according to a credit report compiled by the liquidators for solvency, insolvency firm Grant Thornton. In March, Australia's 13th largest home builder, Porter Davis Homes, went bust, placing 1,700 projects and another 779 empty blocks of land in jeopardy across Victoria and Queensland. At last count, the company owed a whopping $71 million to unsecured creditors, and that's that's us, the norm, you know, small business people that work for builders. You, you're an unsecured creditor. You're not like the bank. So when you're working for someone and you're giving them credit, I mean, you're going to think, here's the thing, you would think a big brand like that, oh, yeah, they'll be fine. You know, they'll be okay. This is why you want to make sure you've got your money coming in from a lot of different pots. I remember back in the mining days when we were starting up our business, I had like 80% of my income coming from one client in one sector. And I, oh, oh, that would scared the shit out of me, to be quite frank. You got to diversify. I still remember the, the bricky in that other article who had like, was owed over $400,000 to this one builder. See, here's the thing. You're owed money, and you think if you don't work on the next job, you know, it'll come, it'll come, it'll trickle in. You might damage the relationship and then you know have a fight on your hands to get what you're owed. But it could be worse. It could be like this. The liquidators have warned that these funds are unlikely to ever be recovered. Luckily, most customers are said to be pay partially reimbursed by insurance companies or a government bailout. Yeah, the customers. But what about the small business people? Oh, boy. So many Australians don't really, they've got no idea. No idea of the challenges of running a small business in this country. No wonder everyone goes, to hell with it, buy a house. I mean, think, look at your house, how much money it's made for you in capital growth compared to just the, the challenges of running a business. And they're not making it easier. Of those homeowners, 560 of them have paid a deposit, but Porter Davis had never taken out building insurance, leaving them with no automatic payout from the insurer. Yeah, but here's the question, could they? Were, were they actually at the point in the procurement of the building where they could get the insurance? Can you get insurance on the the design, town planning, that initial stage. Yet in an unexpected, uh, unprecedented step, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews agreed to refund them the lost money in a $15 million government bailout in April. Of course he did. And what about the other art news coming out of Victoria where they're taxing schools? <laughs> they're going to they're remove the tax exempt status from some private schools. They're taxing schools to pay for these type of things. There you go. However, all the other unsecured creditors, mostly tradies, will have to wear the cost. It could put many out of business as they face financial ruin. Yeah, that's that's just bullshit, honestly. And this is why, you know, when you're thinking why tradies charge so much, because they've got so much bullshit to deal with. And this is why people leave the game. You know, they're ruining their bodies, working themselves to death, and have to deal with this crap. In total, the failed business owes $146.5 million to creditors. 
Of that, 57.5 was owed to two secured creditors, the Commonwealth Bank, and another called Chess- Chesapeake, owed 32.9 million and 24.6 million, respectively. So there you go, they get paid first. Port Davis also owes 18 million to its employees in unpaid wages, leaves, and superannuation. This is the problem with leave and super. I think super should be paid every week or every fortnight or every month, whenever you get paid. And leave should be, I don't know. You should get a pay, you should essentially get everything paid, and you're forced to act like an adult and save yourself. But that's not going to happen. You know, we know that. Only C, the CBA is expected to get its money back in full. Um, Chesapeake and employees will receive a partial dividend, as they are priority creditors. Everyone else estimated to be more than 1,000 unsecured creditors have been warned that their status is dividend unlikely. The liquidators also reveal that they still plan to pursue some customers over debts to increase the amount of cash they've had to disperse to creditors. So there'll be some people whose houses are not finished, but it's reached a certain stage in, in progress where a progress claim should be issued. So there'll be people here that'll be getting bills from a busted company with no chance of getting their house finished. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I wonder how much Grant and Thornton is earning out of this. They said around $16.7 million worth of building works have been carried out and have yet to be paid for. These debts primarily relate to invoices issued to customers at the completion of a stage in their build, i.e. the customers who received the benefit of works undertaken to completion of that particular stage and have been invoiced accordingly, the report said. Given we are still actively assess, uh, assisting some customers in achieving occupancy, some of the above accounts receivable will be recovered. They said customers could try to offset their debts if they had lost money as a result of the Porter Davis collapse. However, there will be instances where debts are due and payable and the liquidators will seek to recover those amounts for the benefit of creditors, they warned. News.com had previously reported that several customers who had incomplete homes were thousands out of pocket, were worried they would be personally pursued by the liquidators to pay more after receiving a stern email to that effect. Well, yeah. Yeah, you will be. And you'll have to pay them. I mean, if it's work that's been done, you know what's going to happen. The real shit ones will be work is done. They'll be chased for payment. And maybe, you know, someone will go and damage the property because it's not a lockup. Oh, this is this is a mess. Porter Davis had has more than 20 assets that may be recoverable. They've um, conducted 13 sales of furniture, which has netted 142000 The report also found that Porter Davis had been insolvent since February 2023. There were indicators of insolvency prior to that. Now, remember, I've been harping on about the interventions to the market. One of them was the uh, trading while insolvent changes. Remember how they let that happen a couple of years ago? I guarantee you that laid the seed with a whole lot of these companies that we're seeing going under now. Laid the seed. It planted the seed. Because these projects take a long time and you stuff up on one and you hope for the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one to, to get you out of the shit and none of them do. I, I I was shocked when they announced that. Probably because I'm in small business and I've had to chase up bastards for money. I've been pretty lucky. I've not had I've not had that many. I think what in all my years of business, probably twenty grand in total if I had everything up that I've had to write off as bad debt, which isn't that bad. Oh boy. Tradies may have suspected their money was unlikely to be recovered, as there were several reports of disgruntled contractors trashing homes in the wake of the company's collapse. They reportedly left one homeowner homeowner with 50 grand worth of damage. The new mom said the sink and the bathroom taps were intentionally left running. Yes, and we looked at that here. Um, What's this? The Victorian government has announced plans to clamp down on building laws to better protect consumers from being left with uninsured homes because of what happened in the case of Porter Davis Homes. Yeah, that's going to make construction more expensive in Victoria. It won't make any difference, I bet you. It'll make it more expensive. It always does. Well, guys, let's, uh, let's have a bit of a chat about this one, eh? The construction apocalypse continues. How, how could you catch this as a subby? I mean, it'd be the rumour mill. The rumor bill would be what you'd be depending on, but you can't trust it, can you? 
That's just sad, guys. Anyway, there's not really much more to say. We're going to see more of these. Just don't have all your eggs in one basket, everyone. It's easier said than done. If, you, if you're doing a lot of work and it's just coming in, you've got to keep, keep moving. I had mates who just halted all work when they didn't get paid. But you've got to make sure your contracts allow you to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Check out Heiser, a bit more Heiser does. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, you can support us on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links, buy our pocket squares or call us if you need an architect. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.